Hello there everyone, What Culture's Adam Cleary here, here for you today to announce three very exciting new shows. We've got the great What Culture Bake Off, a new series where your favourite presenters stop in on a weeknight and watch Jay and Silent Bob. We've got What Culture Apprentice, a highly competitive 12-week competition where budding business hopefuls battle it out to see who will get to edit our articles. And What Culture's Next Top Model, which is literally just me and Jules playing Warhammer 40k. All of this is, of course, lies, but you'd categorically watch every single one of those. And that's sort of my point. Outlandish spin-offs are, in a world that is almost universally bad, actually quite good. I'm not the only one who thinks so either. Video game developers never wants to say no to a cheap buck have historically been quite happy to boot their intellectual property around like a pig's head over the years, often in ways that both startle and upset their core fans. So with the fly still buzzing around that particular visual metaphor, let's explore, shall we? My name is Adam Cleary and these are 10 video game spin-offs you won't believe exist. Number 10, Mega Man Soccer. Kart races are a perfectly normal gaming spin-off format. I got a Switch for Christmas this year, and despite also being gifted Zelda Pokemon and that bloody goose, I've done absolutely nothing but play Mario Kart in bed. Mascot racing spin-offs are normal, but mascot football spin-offs are not. Thus, Mega Man Soccer launched on the SNES in 1994 to a collective meh from fans and critics worldwide. While the premise of a Mega Man football game is strange unto itself, what's even stranger is that Mega Man Soccer just plays like your average FIFA game of the time. There are individual buttons used to pass and shoot, you can slide tackle, take penalty kicks and intercept the ball with the correct player placement. Save of course for this cool power shot feature that has a different effect depending on your character. Gonna wear uh, gonna rock you here, right? If you use Iceman's power shot, it encases an opposing player in bees. No, just kidding, it's obviously ice. Number 9, The Typing of the Dead. When the days at what culture are dragging, I sometimes like to just imagine how this particular meeting went. So, who's got a hot new idea for the next House of the Dead game? Anybody? Anybody? Ah, yes, Steve, the floor is yours. Okay, guys, hear me out. It's still zombies, and it's still fast, and it's still exciting, and it's still on a big rail and all that, but instead of shooting them, you have to type out words. Like, uh, daffodil and uh, snapdragon, and if you type them just right, they die. Now, whatever might have happened next, I'll leave to your own imagination, but it somehow led to that exact premise being released as an actual game. One that proved so popular that it made the jump from arcade cabinet to home console in the early 2000s and was even ported to iOS as recently as 2012. Proof once and for all that there are no stupid ideas, only stupid people. Number 8, Uncharted Fight for Fortune. Yes, that Uncharted. The blockbuster action-adventure franchise featuring exotic locations, supernatural beasties, guns, car chases, explosions, and despicable villains. The natural progression there, of course, is a card game. Uncharted Fight for Fortune is exactly that, a turn-based strategy with a coating of Uncharted makeup. Developed by Bend Studio, and hello there to Bend Studio, tactics and careful thought are required to succeed in this corner of the Uncharted verse rather than the normal strategy of solving a rudimentary puzzle then shooting 500 people over a statue. If you enjoyed Triple Triad in Final Fantasy VIII or Gwent in The Witcher, it's actually pretty satisfying. It's a real treat for Uncharted fans too, with characters, sound effects, locations, treasures, and creatures from the the original PS3 trilogy all being included in some form or another. Number 7, Wily and Light's Rock Board. That's paradise. Another Mega Man spin-off for you here, Wily and Light's Rock Board That's Paradise did something even more nutty with the Mega Man world than Mega Man Soccer did. It turned it into a board game. After choosing the number of players, picking a character, selecting a map, and setting the rules, you're dropped onto a board. Here, your mission is to buy up as many properties as you can in order to secure the most rent, with the winner determined by factors like the amount of spaces owned or the amount of zenny accrued, zenny being the game's currency. There are even squares that you can land on which will cause various effects on the board, let's call them, oh, I don't know, chance and community chest, and why yes, this does sound oddly familiar. Surprisingly, Mega Man Monopoly, and let's call a spade a spade here, didn't do all that well, and you're pretty unlikely to ever see one in the wild. Number 6, Pokemon Channel. Remember that old lie your parents used to tell you? 
No, God, not that one. You actually will go blind. The one about getting square eyes. Well, if it was true, then it definitely would have affected kids back in 2004 when Pokemon pioneered a game where you sat and stared at your TV while you were literally sat staring at your TV. Ditching the action and the strategy of the main Pokemon games, this spin-off has you serving as the test audience for a titular channel. A TV station that broadcasts a variety of Pokemon-centric shows from anime to newscasts to whatever the hell this is. From here, all you have to do is watch TV. That's it. Granted, there is some interactivity involved in certain shows, and you can also explore a few areas around your house, but it's hard to class this as a proper game as much as a really long series of quick time events. Stuff like watching a Psyduck read the news is fun, I will admit, but it gets old faster than the speed at which Team Rocket are blasting off at. Eh, that joke works. Number five, Seat Rhythm Final Fantasy. Not content with being one of the craziest video game spin-offs we've ever encountered, Seat Rhythm Final Fantasy also has one of the most brain-melting titles these fair eyes have ever seen. I'll just get the old diagram out for you here. Seat Rhythm is a portmanteau of theater and rhythm, just like Chillax or... Gunt. Theat Rhythm has you controlling a group of four characters from the beloved Japanese franchise, tapping on the screen in time with the music. Successful taps will inflict damage on the creature or boss you're currently facing, and there are a couple of modes that provide slight variations on the basic gameplay loop. It's not exactly groundbreaking, but it is addictive as all hell, and as we all know, Final Fantasy's music is absolutely awesome to listen to. Plus, if you are one of those grown adults who are into Funko Pops, and no judgement here, friends, you'll really like the character design as well. Number 4. Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix Over the years, we've seen Mario ride carts, play tennis, brawl, compete in the Olympics, and do literally anything other than actual plumbing, but nothing he's ever done has been quite as weird as that time he had a dance-off with Waluigi. Yes, Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix is a thing, and it exists, and it's a thing. Released in 2005 for the GameCube, the title features the usual crop of Mario-related characters as they embark on a musical adventure, with the titular plumber tasked with defeating a series of bad guys by laying down some fat dance moves across a variety of stages. There's a story tacked on to make all the dancing feel like it means something, but you're essentially just tapping buttons in time with the music in order to make Mario and I can't believe I'm going to say this, shake that booty. It's weirdly mesmerizing and definitely a little horrifying since Mario's blank expression makes him look dead inside even when he's moving like he's just won the lottery. Number three, Metal Gear Solid Snake Escape. You know what Metal Gear Solid has always been missing over the years? Playable apes. Thank the Lord then that Metal Gear Solid exists, so we needn't worry about that problem ever again. An Ape Escape spin off that plays like Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid was included on the Ape Escape 3 disc as an unlockable minigame. Your job is to control simian spy Peepo Snakes, stealthing your way across a variety of stages with the aid of your banana pistol, watermelon bombs, and a couple of other gadgets. The goal being to stop a mischievous group of other monkeys. Is it a really dumb idea? Yes, but is it also hilarious in the doing of it? Well, mostly yes as well. The game parodies and riffs on Metal Gear Solid in so many amusing ways. Like, take for example one of the best touches, when you hide under a cardboard box, the blue light on Pippo's head will poke through the top of the box. Ha ha ha! Ah, classic gets me every time. And since it's only an hour long and bundled with the main game, it won't cost you any extra money and the joke doesn't outstay its welcome. Now if only there was some other way we could cross those two franchises. Number 2, Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake vs. Monkey. Oh, would you look at that, what are the odds? This really isn't my thing, says Solid Snake in Snake vs. Monkey's opening cutscene, shortly after he's been told that his next mission is to infiltrate a jungle and capture all of the monkeys in it. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake vs. Monkey is honestly a spin-off of Metal Gear Solid 3. It's a funny little treat that has Snake running around a clearing, knocking out apes with a stun gun, and whisking them away to safety. Each stage has a set number of apes to collect, and you are ranked based on how much time they take you to gather. It it is absolutely bizarre to see the gruff manliness of Snake clashing with the colour and childishness of Ape Escape. But on the downside, the game is so basic and repetitive that even with its extremely short length, it can start to feel like a slog after a little while. Plus, you've got to, like, shoot apes, which is a weird vibe. Number 1. Mario Teaches Typing 
Just when you thought the Mario spin-offs couldn't get any crazier, allow us to introduce you to Mario Teaches Typing, an early 90s education game in which Mario attempts to sharpen up your grammar, you little puke. Players are tasked with spelling out the words in order to control the on-screen action across a handful of mini-games. Mario's Smash and Dash, which is sadly not as dirty as it sounds, Mario's Wet World Challenge, which is mercifully not as dirty as it sounds, and Mario's Tunnel of Doom, which... Jeez, God, you really do forget that horny Nintendo was a thing in the 90s, don't you? It's nowhere near as fun as Typing of the Dead is because, well, I mean, hell, that's a really high bar, but also because the gameplay is... Well, there's no gameplay whatsoever. You're just pushing keys on a keyboard. Most baffling of all, though, is that this game actually got a sequel. So that's uh, Mario there, who can barely speak English, teaching us how to spell not once, but twice. Money, eh? It'll do things to you. So there you have it, those are 10 crazy video game spin-offs you won't believe exist, even though I've literally just told you that they do. Let me know what you made of it all in the comments below, and of course don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching, I've of course been Adam Cleary, kinda do want to make What Culture's next top model now, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.